social media is about storytelling, and telling stories has been around since the dawn of time. We have been figuring out ways of how to express ourselves since early man and woman, from cave paintings to cuneiform, from wayang kulit to puppet shows, from the quill to the typewriter, from print to postcards, from emails to WhatsApp. All these are forms of expression, and today, a lot of it is done through social media. <laughs> it's so good to see you guys. Hello from Brunei. <laughs> Are there any Bruneians in the crowd today? It's good, good. Hey, just a quick note. The thing about Bruneians is that we like to help. And so if you ever need help, Katin, go to the Bruneians, ask for help. <laughs> All we ask in return is you bring us to Starbucks. <laughs> I've never met a Bruneian who will say no to Starbucks. <laughs> so I'm from Brunei, but between 1999 and the year 2010, I lived overseas, mostly in Australia, but I spent some time as well in West Malaysia. And so inevitably, while living overseas, the questions came, Brunei? Tell me about Brunei. Where is Brunei? What is it like living in Brunei? Is it somewhere near the Middle East? Why do Bruneians like going to Miri over the weekends? <laughs> My answers were usually you know, unremarkable and went along the lines of there's oil and gas, our king is a great and kind king, and the currency is stronger, so that's why we go to Miri sometimes. <laughs> so I found that my answers were usually a little bit shallow, lazy, but most of all, they were uninspiring. So I decided to find out more. I read about Brunei but I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to rediscover Brunei, but through the eyes and the stories of the people. So in 2009, while still living in Australia, I created a Twitter account, and that marked the start of my social media journey. Today, I come to you not as an expert, but I come to you as someone who's been on a journey, and what a journey it's been. Let me just share a few uh, pictures from my journey so far. This was a picture taken from the first social media project that I was involved in back in 2011. This was Twestival. This was a Twitter festival which we used to raise awareness and funds for Brunei's Child Development Center. This is a picture of me uh, speaking with the former Secretary of State from the UK, William Hague. The British High Commission in Brunei at the time were inviting a few bloggers to meet with him, and I was invited as one of them. This picture was taken at a tweet up. A tweet up is a Twitter meetup, and the idea was to just gather friends from online to connect with them offline. So this was a couple of years ago where there were over 100 people who came along. <laughs> Now, um, does anyone recognize the gentleman on my left? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this is Wu Chun, and arguably he's Brunei's second most well-known export from Brunei, after all the guys. <laughs> so across my talk today, I'd like to share some observations about social media. And I want to put forward a case of why now, more than ever before, we need to be purposefully engaged on social media. I will then leave you with a few thoughts on how to use your digital voice with purpose. But first, a few truths about social media. Number one, social media connects us. We are online, liking, posting, tweeting, retweeting, double tapping, swiping. You know, we are online and we are online all the time. Am I right? Yeah. And the thing about social media is that once upon a time, we used things like postcards uh, and Polaroid cameras to capture and share special moments. But now, we're online all the time, and we're sharing our lives all the time. Social media connects us. Number two, social media is fun, and we use it to find out about things of interest to us. Recently, someone came up to me and they asked, I'm going through a bit of a dry spell on social media. I, I've run out of things to post about. Any tips? <laughs> and my, my, <laughs> my advice is that when in doubt, post stories or pictures about food, travel, or animals. 
People love pictures of food, travel, and animals. Allow me to illustrate. This was a picture taken a couple of weeks ago where I spoke at a, a youth camp on the topic of social media. You know, uh, Instagram only gave me 54 likes. Okay, not bad. This is a plate of kwee 130 likes. It's a plate of kwee yeah. This is me trying to be a bit artsy. Uh, this is me reading a book. I wrote down, shiny devices and screens are fine, but I still enjoy paper. Print is not dead, so I was trying to be profound. You know, 73 likes. This is a picture of uh, Korea. I was there recently, I posted a picture of just a signboard and a street, 160 likes. Travel. Now, this is a picture of me in one of the vinyl stores in Brunei. You know, not bad, uh, 113 likes. This is a picture of a squirrel. <laughs> a squirrel, yeah. So, when in doubt, food, travel, and animals. <laughs> Number three, social media is an amplifier. It gives us a platform to talk about and draw attention to things which matter to us. A few years, I asked myself three questions. How can I positively positively influence the way the world thinks about Brunei. How can I use what I have to help the world rediscover Brunei through the stories of the people as I did? And how do I rally enough netizens behind the cause? So I thought for a while, and it hit me. I will make the hashtag OurBrunei trend on Twitter. So the idea was simple but it was a big idea. So with a bit of planning, with a bit of coordination, I told people, all right, on this day, this time, come online on Twitter and share something positive about Brunei. The results, we did not succeed. However, there were a few peculiar things which came out of that um, campaign. Number one, it did trend in KL. It did trend in PJ. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, peculiarly as well, my Twitter name, Brunei Tweet, did trend in Australia. But more importantly, point number three is that this event gathered over 1,000 people from across the world. And you can see from this little map, there were, this, this was taken uh, just after the event, so you can see spots of our Brunei happening all over the place. Social media is an amplifier. And this fascinates me. The fact that when we take a step back from our immediate online circles, we see that we are part of a bigger picture. We are not just confined to a small bubble, but we are part of a global story. So with a bit of courage and the right strategies, we can make a difference. Now, a few observations about social media. You walk into a room, you scan the hall, what do you see? This could be anywhere, a park, a library, a restaurant, just watch for a while. Families, parents, children, friends, colleagues, all looking down. Everyone is tapping away, scrolling away, either on a game or on social media or chatting. I fear that society is becoming more dilute, and this should bother us. Friends, you can be physically next to someone, yet still be miles away at the same time, lost on social media. Proximity is not the same as intimacy. Let's not be naive. There are predators online as well. There are people who use social media to exploit, harass, and manipulate. Recently, Monica Lewinsky gave a great TED talk. She spoke about her story of shame and redemption. And in her talk, she touched on the topic of social media. Her three points were this. People are no longer asking for consent. People no longer care about context and people are demonstrating less and less compassion. Consent, context, compassion. 
I encourage you to check out that TED Talk by Monica Lewinsky. It's a good one. <clears throat> now, the third thing I'd like to share about in relation to my observations is what I call the triangle of chaos, referring to the types of people who you will find on social media. Imagine with me a triangle. On one side, there are the intolerant. These are the kinds of people who have an opinion and they care very little about yours. These are the ones who drown out the conversation. They type in capital letters. They say things like, I'm right, you were wrong, shut up. They'll say things like, why are you so ungrateful? If you don't like it, leave the country. These are the intolerant. There's another group, the ultra-silent. Now this group is quite interesting. There are a group of people online who prefer to watch from a distance. They're observers. They're the ones who just prefer to fly under the radar. They might have a smart thing or an intelligent thing to say, but they prefer to keep silent. Why? Possibly because they're indifferent, or maybe because they're afraid to stand up against the angry mob of the intolerance. There's a great quote by Charles Bukowski. The problem with the world is that intelligent people are so full of doubt, while the stupid ones are full of confidence. And finally, there's another group. These are the anonymous. There is a growing group online who have gone anonymous. Now, the good thing about being anonymous is that people tend to express themselves more. The bad thing about being anonymous is that people express themselves more without being accountable for the things they say, post, or share. These three things, intolerance, silence, and anonymity, this gives you the recipe for potential chaos. If we were um, honest with ourselves, we would admit that we're already seeing symptoms of chaos on social media. And this is the reason why, now more than ever before, we need to be purposefully engaged on social media. We can't let these, these people dominate the show. So you may be sitting there with a few questions. What happens if we don't stand up for the things which matter to us? I don't know. What happens if we allow the intolerant people to dominate the discussion? I don't know. What if we are witness to online harassment, but we remain silent? I don't know. I submit to you that these are good questions, but they're not the right questions. The right question is how. How can we be part of the solution? How can I make a change? How can we make things better? How can we prevent things from getting worse? As I draw to a close, I'd like to leave you with three thoughts on how to use your digital voice with purpose and to engage with purpose online. As already touched on by previous speakers, we touched on the topic of purpose. The first point is to be intentional. Social media is not a one-night stand. You cannot build a relationship, relationship if you have a touch-and-go approach. Without relationship, there is no credibility. Without credibility, there's no trust. Without trust, you have no influence. But if you're intentional, and if you come to a place on, of influence, you can make a difference. Number two, practice inclusivity. You know, keep having fun, keep connecting online, keep asking people about their points of view, keep asking questions, broaden your worldview, create space in the middle. Let's pull dialogue more towards the middle, away from the intolerant, away from the silent ones. Let's have an intelligent discussion online. Practice inclusivity and intelligence. Engage intelligently. No one in this room would deny that they would want to see growth and progress. But growth and progress are often shaky. Uh, for those of you in Malaysia, you're going through a really unique time in this point of history where online, 
<laughs> it's an amazing time if you're an observer, if you're a participator with the dialogue that's happening online in terms of what's happening in Malaysia. And it's a great time to be involved. But growth and progress, it needs to be intelligent. Otherwise, it's still chaos. So I challenge you to think about ways to, to engage intelligently, collaborate with people, find local people you can partner with, find a mentor. There are many, many ways. But the next time you go online, consider how you can engage intelligently. Can we be confident about the future of social media? That the next chapter won't be dominated by chaos and foolishness? The answer is no. But we can be committed to the struggle. Thank you.